Wow, that is a beautiful bike. Is that hole in the down tube so you can pick it up when it's upside down? Or just the looks alone, it's gotta make me like 10% faster if I buy it. Dang, that thing looks like an F1 car. I wonder if they lay each piece of carbon individually. I wonder how much faster I'll be riding this bike. Ah, the Antidote Carbon Jack, handcrafted Polish excellence. I'm JJ, and today we're throwing a leg over this beautiful bike to see if it rides as good as it looks. This is mountain bike action. As I mentioned a moment ago, Antidote Cycles is a Polish company that hand builds their frames. That's right, their frames. They don't trust the big Asian factories to meet their quality specifications, so they decided to do it themselves. The carbon jack frame looks like a Formula One car was made into a bike and was, without fail, a conversation starter at every trailhead. The frame is a hand-laid monocoque carbon and Vectron composite with the front and rear triangles held together with CNC'd and anodized 7075 aluminum links and titanium hardware. Anadote has categorized this as an enduro bike and has given it a 65 degree head angle and a relatively slack seat angle of 74.5 degrees. Our size large has a reach of 480 millimeters and a chainstay length of 450 millimeters which is common through all sizes. Being an enduro bike means it must be able to climb from time to time, so climb we did. We were pleasantly surprised from the first turn of the cranks. Never did we notice any significant pedal bob, and it felt quite firm and efficient when under power. Long road climbs were of little concern to us, and though we had the option, we never felt the need to throw the shock into pedal mode. Tight and technical climbs were a bit cumbersome thanks to the relatively long wheelbase. This also made particularly tight corners a challenge, but we always managed success in spite of this. We also noticed, specifically on steeper climbs, the seat angle's slackness. It's nothing more than a small performance issue, but it does make a difference and we found ourselves shifting forward quite severely to compensate. Antidote integrates its floating damping system linkage into the 150mm of travel on the carbon jack. It uses a short link, counter-rotating system, with the rear shock fixed to both links. The shock is floating inverted between both mounting points, which they claim relieves stress and increases small bump sensitivity. The suspension brand of choice for this bike was Fox, with a 160mm travel Fox 36 factory up front and a float X2 factory shock in the back. Antidote's claim of the carbon jack being an all-out race bike may not exactly be spot on. It certainly is an incredibly capable platform but the stability of longer travel enduro frames is somewhat lacking where you can't just point and shoot blindly. Instead, the bike feels light and poppy, which is not something we'd normally expect in an enduro bike. It lets you put the bike where you want while still giving you the confidence and stability to carry speed, but not in a way we'd desire between the tape. On more mellow trails and jump lines, it did not feel like a longer 150mm travel bike and carried speed quite well. It feels very much like a true mountain bike, something that you can ride on almost any trail with confidence and precision. In essence, it descends well in all situations. Cornering while riding this bike was also never a concern as it gripped the ground quite well. Berms and flat corners alike were of no concern, allowing us to more easily focus on what's ahead instead of any loss of traction we may be experiencing in the moment. A smattering of SRAM components were chosen to bring this beautiful frame to life, including an X01 drivetrain and code RSC brakes. Unfortunately, on its journey to us from Poland, the Industry 9 wheels the bike was supposed to arrive with were lost or couldn't get past customs, so we had to improvise and threw on a pair of Revel RW30s which worked excellently for this application. Our biggest standout concerning the carbon jack was how well rounded it was. It pedals well, it was big enough for the rough stuff, and agile enough for the tight and jumpy stuff. All around, a really fun bike to ride. The Carbon Jack's weaknesses were in tight, low speed corners, as it is a relatively long bike. We also feel the seat angle was a little slack when climbing up the steep stuff, which we countered by moving the saddle forward so we could be a little more forward when climbing. Our last complaint is the seat tube height, which is considerable especially when slightly shorter riders, who normally wouldn't have a problem riding a large frame, couldn't get the saddle low enough when fully extended, meaning a shorter dropper is needed and the saddle doesn't get out of the way as well. 
When putting a bike into a category, it's up to the manufacturer to decide where it belongs. Though the carbon jack has several qualities useful in an enduro race, we feel it meets the mark of a more all-around, all-mountain bike. This isn't a bad trait by any means, and only means the bike is nearly a quiver killer. Its sleek looks and excellent design makes this bike a worthy consideration for anyone on the market. It may be a little pricey at just under $11,000, but you'll f understand the reason and be the talk of the trail as soon as you swing your legs over it. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to leave a comment telling us what you think, either positive or negative. If you'd like to check out the magazine and possibly subscribe, we'll leave a link in the description below. Make sure you also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.